three, two, one, live from Las Vegas, I give you Dr. Faisal Shah Khan. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, happy to be here, uh, you know, with you as usual. It's, it's turning out to be quite exciting to have you as the master of ceremony uh, for these Middle East and South Asia quantum meetup groups events. Uh, so everybody welcome. Uh, we have a great uh, meeting today, meetup with uh, our guest being Captain Jeffrey Cole, uh, who's an active service pilot. He uh, is a pilot on Boeing 777 and 787. Uh, he will be discussing um, the voice of the pilot input, uh, one could call, uh, about how to optimize um, air traffic control, for example, um, how to extend traditional traffic, air traffic control to drones, ground and satellite, and extend relevant supply chains. And this is in the context of um, uh, Dark Star Quantum Labs, who are actually sponsoring this event. Uh, their upcoming uh, product, road, uh, product called Schedule, uh, Schedule with a Q rather than a CH, uh, which pertains to um, using quantum algorithms to solve uh, scheduling problems, such as the one that we're going to be discussing today. So the goal here is to have uh, the voice of the pilot from Captain Cole uh, guide the, the, you know, the, the um, development, if you will, of, of this um, uh, software, this, this algorithmic solution. Uh, so it should be a very interesting and, and uh, exciting talk. Uh, I'm happy that you're all here. Uh, Dave, uh, back to you. And we have uh, one of our speakers, uh, Nada, I'll, 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 I'll get into it in a moment because uh, you have something exciting uh, that's relevant to what we're doing here. Uh, and then I'll also in a moment talk about the quantum kid, uh, Aaron, our, our intern, uh, and his mom, Vera, uh, who is dressed as a head purser as part of what we're uh, up to. Uh, but the, the man of the hour and the reason why we're doing this is we're trying to solve a scheduling problem, a massive scheduling problem with an opportunity that has never been done before. Uh, and, and so we have our, our CEO of Dark Star Quantum Lab, uh, David Wilkinson. Uh, David, I think you're hailing, please tell us where you're hailing from and a little bit about the 22,000 uh, square foot quantum garage. Thank you, Dave. Yes, we've got a, a lot of really exciting things uh, coming up. We've got a 22,000 square foot facility uh, here in North Carolina that we are just really excited to get uh, some, some really neat projects underway with. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for the introduction. Thank everybody for coming, coming today. And uh, back to you, Dave. Oh, thank you. Uh, and the positioning of that particular facility also has to do with the relative position of, of Fort Bragg. Uh, where we have a uh, military advisory board that, that's uh, coming on, online. Uh, David, I'll, I'll uh, leave it to you as, as to whether you want to mention uh, any other words uh, uh, about that. Yes, we do uh, have uh, our military advisory board, which is now um, in the process of, of becoming, uh, to be made official, uh, an announcement is soon to follow um, but we do have a, a very, very special person who is going to be joining that, um, that board for us. And we're really excited to make that announcement. Stay tuned. Oh, uh, thank you for that, uh, David. Uh, the, uh, we have a full colonel uh, who is on our board. We've had a number of, of meetings. And what uh, the good uh, Captain Cole will be speaking about uh, we're also going to be uh, addressing uh, the military version uh, of that. Uh, and we're, we're quite excited uh, for what you're representing, uh, uh, Captain Cole. Uh, I'm going to recognize uh, David Nichols, uh, who I spoke to a, a moment ago. David, uh, welcome to, to our event. I'm, I'm singling you, you, you out. Uh, the, this is a, a quantum meetup. Uh, however, we do have some uh, exciting uh, questions uh, that would be in the minds of, of 10 year olds and head pursers uh, and there's questions in general uh, that you always wanted to ask the, the captain. So we'll have an ask captain moment. Uh, uh, but what I should do is, is give, uh, perhaps what I'll do here is uh, 
take care of, of, the, of the quantum kids uh, introduction. Uh, and then I will introduce uh, Nada and her quantum cat. Uh, and uh, then we'll get into the, the questions. Uh, so the uh, Aaron, our newest intern is a YouTube star uh, hailing from Barrie, uh, Canada, uh, given the nickname Quantum Kid. Uh, Aaron represents uh, smart 10 year olds uh, and moms uh, who want their kids to have the latest and greatest in technology. Uh, Aaron wants to save the world. Uh, he has an end suffering uh, goal. Uh, we're struck by that uh, and we're supporting uh, Aaron and his particular goal uh, to achieve this, uh, where we introduce the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So we have a massive undertaking to make the world a better place uh, through the eyes of, of a 10 year old uh, who has the foresight uh, of a person uh, much, much older. Uh, and we also have Vera. Vera uh, is uh, the COO of We Working Women, uh, the largest North American uh, uh, business group uh, of, of uh, and how would you describe it, Vera? Uh, North American's largest Chinese women entrepreneurship network. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. And part of that network includes a uh, hundred million dollar backed Canadian first cryptocurrency, a stable coin. Uh, and I'm mentioning this as uh, this is also part of our product line uh, where we have high frequency trading uh, and uh, quantum protection, quantum support for cryptocurrency as well as uh, for, for blockchain. So uh, what we want to, what we're here for uh, at the moment, however, uh, is something that is, is specific to NADA's uh, uh, expertise. Uh, so NADA is, is, uh, is hailing uh, from the, uh, is it, are you in the UAE at the moment, NADA? Excellent. And the, uh, your expertise is uh, working with Faisal because you, you, were, you were a student of Dr. Faisal Shah Khan, yes? yes I, was, I was very lucky to have that on there. Oh, that's so nice. And, and Dr. Faisal Shah Khan is your most favorite uh, professor in the world, yes? Without a, without a doubt. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so Thank it's you. very nice that, that you two are, are united here. Now, uh, Nada, though, has unique expertise. You were the first in the UAE uh, to use the D-Wave computer for portfolio optimization. Do I have that correct? Dr. Faisal, <laughs> let's not forget, <laughs> but yeah. S sorry, I, I missed that. Go, go ahead. Oh, sorry, my internet is very uh, strange. Uh, so, uh, yes, I, I was saying Dr. Faisal and I were the first, yes. Oh, okay. So Dr. Faisal was, was recognizing you. Now you're recognizing Dr. Faisal Shah Khan. How nice. Uh, so you were, but you have some, some uniqueness uh, uh, about that. Uh, the, what we're doing here uh, is we're, we're actually going to be creating uh, some quantum circuitry uh, and mathematics uh, that can be solved on a D-Wave computer, uh, which is your expertise and, and Dr. Faisal Shah Khan's expertise, where we'll be extracting information uh, from Captain Cole having to do with, with scheduling. Uh, so, so warning, there may be some math involved, uh, but uh, Nada, I understand that there's some graphics uh, involved as well. In our pre-flight meeting, uh, we didn't get into uh, did, if you wanted to share the screen or you're going to be writing on a, on a physical piece of paper. I'd, I'd prefer to share a screen. I have a little bit of a graphic setup. So. Okay, very good. Very good. As a backup, though, if you want to scribble and then hold it up and if it you has a lot of... Uh, right now. <laughs> yes, that's a great idea. So if it has a bunch of paw prints, uh, it just means your quantum cat uh, showed up, uh, which is a, a beautiful cat. Okay, so with those uh, introductions, did I miss anyone? We're okay? Okay. Uh, well, actually, I have to introduce uh, uh, Captain Cole properly. Uh, so what we have through Captain Cole and, and Dr. Khan, you did mention it, we're very fortunate 
uh, uh, Captain Cole is on the Dark Star Advisory Board as, as a pilot. Uh, he is a Toronto-based active service Boeing pilot for a European airline. Uh, is it for 26 years now uh, that you've been flying? Uh, there, 20, yeah, 27 there, and, and prior to that, uh, in, in, in commercial aviation for well over 30 years. So, Very good. Thank you for that. And you'd started flying with 737s, 747s, now with 777s and 787s. Yes, correct. Very good. And one of the one of our uh, goals here uh, is as uh, as Aaron has dressed up as a pilot and had a had a YouTube as, as a pilot, uh, uh, it's uh, to help uh, the quantum kid become a pilot. And of course, uh, uh, we're all expecting the, the planes uh, and because of our, our military work uh, that will be skipping in and out of the atmosphere. Uh, so we've got some some questions there. It might be a good point, uh, Aaron, uh, to to ask your your questions. Uh, I had suggested uh, to ask Captain Cole if he likes doing loop to loops. Uh, so I've just qualified that that question uh, came from me, not from from Aaron, who had much more serious questions, uh, because uh, you were interested in free fall, like ab ability to to feel like an astronaut, where the plane matches the everything falling. Uh, Aaron, uh, please take it fr from there and, and please have a nice little conversation with Captain Cole. So Captain Cole. Yes, Aaron. Did you, did you do the zero gravity experiment on your plane where you balance it perfectly so it feels like you have zero gravity and you're floating? Um, that's something that we do in this, we can do in the simulator. Um, unfortunately, you don't do it with commercial airplanes um, carrying passengers, but um, um, it is, it is a problem, something that they can do in the simulator. Um, the demonstration of the G is also difficult because you're talking about a ground-based platform for the simulators, but um, uh, I did do it when I um, did training on small aircraft. I did some aerobatics. And um, when you're learning the aerobatics, you do go through the, uh, the zero G uh, schedule. So it's a lot of fun. You get used to it, but um, the military does a lot of that training for astronauts because obviously, um, you know, you have positive negative G's and um, you, you have to get used to that feeling. Um, we still get a little bit of it and you probably do you remember if you're traveling in an aircraft and you're at the back of it sometimes and you hit turbulence, you feel weightless for a second. Uh, it's something that we try to avoid, obviously, because it's not comfortable for passengers. But um, generally, our envelope for flying is, is very small because of passenger comfort. So it's a good question. Very good. Also, also what kind of simulator is it? Um, it's, um, they're built, uh, there's a, uh, a European company that builds them, but it's a full uh, motion simulator. So you can actually um, do all your training in the aircraft and the actual, it's called zero flight training. So the first flight that you make is actual with passengers on board. That's the first actual time in the aircraft because the capabilities, it, it feels just like real life. It's, um, it can do all the things that a real aircraft can do. So, and that's great for us because obvious, for obvious reasons, training, um, there's scenarios that you go through that you wouldn't want to be doing in a real aircraft. Um, you have, you know, scenarios where you fail both engines and you go through your procedures to try and re restart them. And of course, it's not something that you want to do in a real aircraft. Yeah. So, um, but it's, the technology is, is quite amazing. And the graphics now with, um, it's, it's, you would think you're in a real aircraft. It's uh, quite incredible. Very nice. You may have some more some more questions, and I'm and I'm, and I'm interested uh, in them, Aaron. I should mention that, uh, and I'll just share my screen for a, for a second. Uh, you mentioned graphics, so share screen. And uh, could you kindly, uh, Dr. Khan, give me share, screen sharing ability? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and try it now. It's working. Thank you. Okay. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned graphics. Are are you able to see my my screen, Captain Cole? Uh, yes, sir. Now, when I first showed this this picture uh, to someone, 
they thought it was a fake. Yeah. Please tell us the, the story here. Yeah. It's um, that's on approach into Washington Dulles. Yeah. Taken by a check captain. So that's actually on approach. That's probably about, um, I think 4,000 feet. So it's quite a good graphic because it's, it's difficult to take a picture in the actual cockpit because so much light comes in on the windows, but that's um, the exposure is perfect because you can see um, the, the top portion is uh, all the aircraft systems there kind of lit up in green further back are the circuit breakers. Um, and then obviously the cockpit layout. So it's um, that was actually flying manually at that time. So a lot of times, you know, we use autopilot for assistance because it just makes life easier um, and you're required to in certain weather limits. And, and that is great because, you know, a lot of times you, the visibility can be zero, zero, but the, the aircraft's allowed to land at that. So it's quite incredible to, to see how it works and all the systems come together you touch down the aircraft and you see sort of a faint light of the runway ahead of you. And you think, well, that's quite amazing. So it's, it's amazing technology. And, and this is you on the left, is it not? Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. And the gentleman on, on the right uh, uh, scene. So you have one, two, three, four stripes. Is that correct? Correct. That makes you a captain. And the gentleman on the right, I'm seeing three stripes. That's correct. That would be a co-pilot. And then we also have second officers, two stripes. Um, so they are considered as cruise relief pilots. Most airlines have them because um, when you're flying at over 20,000 feet there, um, you don't necessarily have to carry a bunch of pilots that are qualified to land the aircraft because there's no requirement for him to do that. So they're mm -hmm. generally junior pilots, but they're always with a qualified pilot. Um, and, and they are trained to do maneuvers at high altitudes. They don't actually land the aircraft. And when you're a second officer in training, you have one stripe. So it's, it's you know, the progression between one up to four stripes. Very, very good. And how many stripes uh, could, we, could we start uh, Aaron off with? Well, I, I think we have to start at one. Very nice. That's very in, nice. The, in the training, that's in the training. Very nice. So, so Aaron, because your 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 grade your grade school and what grade are you in, Aaron? I'm in fifth grade. He's in fifth grade. So wow. you can tell your your uh, your principal uh, who was excited that you're here uh, that uh, you've now been uh, identified uh, by Captain Cole uh, a a captain uh, for Boeing seven 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 eight seven an active pilot that you've been identified. Uh, as uh, what's what's the wording here, Captain Cole? So he would be uh, uh, officer in training to be a second officer. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to write that down. The officer in training. Actually, I'll I'll rely on you, Vera, to, to write that write that down. Yeah. Okay. So this is exciting because we're actually doing stuff here. We're we're promoting and and we're uh, we're, we're we're making things happen. Uh, for the next generation and for us to support that right now. Well, this is an exciting an exciting picture that we, that we have here. Uh, we can come back to it because it looks like there's scheduling items. What I want to do is just share uh, a picture. We talk about pictures, which is uh, uh, Aaron is a is a student of Dr. Faisal Shah Khan in that uh, Faisal, uh, you've given very hard books for him to read, which he has read. And then what uh, Aaron is doing is trying to understand from his point of view uh, what's going on here. And I think here from this, this here's Aaron, the, 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 the quantum kid, uh, one of the comic strips. So I, I spend uh, two hours on Saturday, two hours on Sunday with, with Aaron, teaching him about quantum mechanics and having a discussion about how it can be used to save the world and end suffering. Uh, and Aaron's thinking ahead. Uh, so in the first strip here, we have a uh, schedule and uh, that's my misspelling. Uh, uh, Aaron actually knows it's S-C-H. That's my misspelling, but I thought it was cute. So I did it and I made a 10 year old put his name on it. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Aaron, uh, for that moment. Uh, the, here we have uh, your plane would be in this middle area. And what we have depicted here uh, are drones. This one labeled evil drone. Uh, and uh, although drones don't don't aren't born evil necessarily, it could happen. 
And I think in terms of the free fall move, uh, the Quantum Kid had in mind the rebadge enterprise NX-01 as NX-Q1, uh, taking out the evil drone, uh, which might be thought of as scheduling issue. Uh, I was just speaking with uh, a resource uh, who uh, has worked on the full-size drones that would occupy the same airspace, and, and they're, they're uh, driverless, uh, the uh, autonomous. At the bottom here, what looks like a souped-up version uh, of Elon Musk's Cybertruck, uh, however, it's spiting, it's uh, spouting uh, quantum antimatter fire, uh, which came from, from the mind of a 10-year-old. But when we Googled it, we discovered it's a real thing. It actually is born uh, uh, under special conditions for neutron stars, uh, which is on the way to creating black holes, uh, which is uh, what is, is now behind me and David Wilkinson's. Uh, so David Wilkinson has fallen into the event horizon for the moment. He'll be coming back out. Uh, later on, we hope. Uh, so what we have to identify here is for the record, uh, we, we we are looking to the good things that Faisal wants to do aligned to the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals and saving the world, but uh, Dark Star may be limited. And at this time, I'm going on record to say we don't have the ability to manufacture uh, quantum antimatter fire that is born uh, in special neutron stars. With that said, there are things that we that we can do. So let's take a look at uh, what we what we can do. We talked about uh, schedule. So let me just click on our actual. We've gone on record uh, with the Defense Department uh, to say we can do. And here we have. Uh, this is on our, our website. It's our product summary. Uh, we have defined schedule. Here we go. We define nope. uh, we define schedule uh, as uh, the ability to uh, well schedule has to do with process optimization. Uh, the good captain Cole, every captain uh, is able to optimize the profit margin uh, for a, a given flight in terms of the decisions that are made, and we'll talk about that for in a second. Uh, number one, in terms of upgrading air traffic control. Uh, which is the bailiwack uh, of, a, of a pilot, of a captain. Uh, number two is extending the traditional air traffic control to drones uh, depicted uh, by the quantum kid. It was an evil drone. We should think about that. It could happen. Uh, as well as ground, driverless cars are showing up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Musk. And satellites. In this case, it was the Enterprise swooping down from below. I, I think a new movie is in the making for Star Trek. Uh, but we have the, uh, the low-flying Elon Musk satellites, uh, which might be bumping into the airspace of the military vehicles uh, that uh, we are discussing with, with the uh, military. Uh, so it actually is, is, is quite relevant, uh, what uh, Aaron had, had shown. Uh, and then what we have here is a, is a circuit. Uh, Faisal, uh, Dr. Khan, could you please uh, uh, describe what we have here and the relevance to this, uh, to this meetup? Certainly, Dave. Thank you. Uh, so this circuit actually is something that uh, appeared in um, one of my papers from uh, some time ago. Um, it has to do with uh, what's called a, so this is in fact what you see on the screen here, uh, the, the graphic, uh, is a quantum logic circuit. Uh, so in abstract thought process, that's what they look like. Uh, the G sub I, J, uh, forgive me for sounding a bit technical and mathematical, but we should do that uh, often, as often as we can, uh, is actually what's known as a, a, um, a logic gate, a quantum logic gate. That's what happens to you qubits. These are the information units of quantum computers, right? So you act on these information uh, units with some kind of a, process, right? You shoot lasers at them or, or some other manipulation, right? To, to make them do something just like in a regular computer. Uh, so in abstract, they, they appear as unitary matrices. But the question is that if you have, you know, say 5,000 qubits, 10,000 qubits, how do you control all of them, right? In some meaningful way. So for that, you have to have some notion of universal uh, gate set, right? Some sort of universal operations in the sense that they can uh, emulate any operation that you can think of as being performed on these qubits. So given that sort of, you know, gate set, you try to construct 
a circuit for, for your given problem uh, logic gate, right? And that's what appears on the right side uh, in the, the screen here. And that consists of these smaller blocks, right? That you see here. And they're, um, those blocks come from the, you know, allocated or desired set, the universal set, gate set. And uh, they're maybe, they may be connected to each other. That's what the line is here. And, and they kind of, you know, work together to, to make the qubits do what you want them to do, right? Now, uh, that's, you could say that what you see on the right-hand side is a quantum logic circuit. And when it comes to actually uh, coming up with an algorithm on a quantum computer, that'll help you do things much faster as, as promised or more efficiently as, as promised by you know, quantum computer scientists. Uh, you need to have um, these sets, sets of gates, these logic circuits uh, constitute that algorithm. So going back to schedule that we'll uh, get input for from, from the captain today, uh, whatever problem that comes from the captain, uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll formulate that in some, some sense as, you know, another will do it for us in a little bit. Uh, and ultimately it, it could be phrased as a quantum logic circuit that can be sent to a quantum computer. So that's what that represents right there. Fantastic. The, uh, so we have some, some of the technical side here as this is, this is strictly speaking a, a technical uh, meetup uh, where we uh, want to be able to have uh, a, uh, a result uh, that we can apply to uh, a uh, quantum software development environment and actually solve the problem. Now to put this in perspective here, the, the idea is live, uh, you're gonna get uh, Captain Cole's reaction uh, and his interest uh, in why he's here, uh, which personally, I think it has to do with, and I'll, I'll turn to, to, to Captain Cole to validate uh, or, or to refine, uh, is better scheduling starting with the crew. So starting with the pilot. If the pilots are able to uh, three months when they ask for a certain time off to actually get that time off, you have happier pilots. Now, when that happens uh, and they know when they should be there or not there behind the, in the cockpit, what happens for airlines is they save money in that they do not have an extra set of pilots and crew available where they're paying money. So what we're doing here is a way to save the money, save money for airlines. Number two uh, has to do also with a set of variables uh, that uh, Captain Cole will, will mention, uh, the pre-flight uh, checklist and related uh, checklist, as well as the ability uh, to enhance the experience for the customers. Uh, so that's a wide range that I, I set out. Let me look at my, my notes. Oh yes, uh, and in fact, Extending to the crew, uh, this, is, this is where we have uh, Vera uh, dressed as a senior purser. Now, we had a little conversation about that. Uh, and uh, uh, well, at the right time, Captain Cole uh, will uh, uh, have a mock conversation with uh, uh, what, he, what he expects from a senior purser, as we do have, uh, uh, we do have aspiring uh, senior pursers, uh, students uh, who have expressed some interest in, in what we're doing here. The, the, the whole idea is to get information where you'll never get it before, how often you have this opportunity. And of course, and you also have a little sign there, uh, don't you, Vera? Uh, and then uh, this is for, for a quantum kid to put on your cool shades. Yes, so we have another sponsor here uh, where uh, we not only do we want the quantum kid to have his pilot wings, he can launch his own uh, quantum airline, the Aaron airline. Thank you for that. Uh, so yes, dreams are, are, are made here. Uh, as part of what we're doing is we're gonna get into uh, hedging of fuel, quadratic and, and linear equations. Uh, uh, there's gonna be a quantum cat running around uh, and there's a gamma function. So, so a, a, a hodgepodge of fun and, and technical sounding things, all which will come together in this meetup where we're gonna go till two o'clock for the official time. But then if you wanna stick around with us, we're going for another hour. 
because we're actually going to create again the algorithms or the information necessary to do a test uh, where we have an opportunity uh, with uh, one of our friendly neighborhood quantum computer firms that has software uh, to actually create an opportunity where we take this to the airline to say, hey, we've got something uh, for you. And then to identify to investors, hey, uh, we have an opportunity for an ROI. This way everybody wins. The investors win, the airlines win by lowering their, their costs, the pilot and crew win by having better scheduling, uh, and the general public wins by way of uh, having a more enjoyable ex experience. So that's the, the general idea that, that I, I have. Uh, Captain Cole, uh, could, could you uh, ref refine, correct, improve the statement I just, I just made, uh, uh, which, which uh, your shoulders are, are now bearing? <laughs> yes, okay, that was uh, a good explanation, Dave. Um, just a couple of things. So obviously um, it, it comes down uh, to a cost issue for airlines. Um, I've been in the industry long enough. I've seen many different ways it's done. Um, you have bid line systems, which is um, a lot of the North American companies use. Um, and then there's rostering, which is a lot of the uh, European companies do. And there's preferential bidding. And then there's a combination of, of um, all those together. What they're trying to introduce now is the preferential bidding into rostering. So. Um, you get you get your schedule for the month and you're able to pick things. You, you can say, I want to fly west, I want to fly east. So there are um, some parameters that you have a choice for, but a lot of times you still can't pick the flights. So what people do is they try to pick um, days off and they try to pick um, birthdays or Christmas. And that comes into another issue with vacations. But ultimately, the systems they have fall short, um, which leads to company frustration, pilot frustration, um, it, it's a difficult process, very complicated. Um, and we need a system that um, can react quickly. And, and quite frankly, it, it has to be able to handle the computations because it is so complex. Um, you have to schedule aircraft efficiently and you have to make sure that these aircraft are crewed. So uh, inevitably what happens with a lot of companies is there's crisis management at some point because they have too few pilots or um, uh, something happens and, and we have to crew an air aircraft. And you don't wanna to carry too many pilots obviously because of cost, but you have to carry enough to cover um, those situations. And um, from my experience is generally that they're always um, changing and trying to adapt pro old programs, which I think have essentially run out of uh, their, their efficient time of being uh, uh, utilized and, you know, hoping that quantum is something that, um, that answers those questions. And listen, a happy crew is, is a happy airline because um, we're on the front line and um, you want us rested and happy as, as well as the cabin crew. Um, we, you, you can have, you know, hundreds of people in offices um, and we do need back offices, but I mean, what people get and what passengers get is, is the flight line, the people on the, um, on that end of it. So it's, um, something, like I said, I'm hoping that we can, uh, resolve. Okay. Very, very good. So to cap that off, I, I've got a, a question here. Uh, uh Aaron, uh, is that your look of stress? Is that like you're pulling out of a loop to loop? What? <laughs> In, in this picture on the screen, uh, which is what, from your, one of your videos, this is what inspired uh, Aaron Airlines. You have a, a facial expression that I'm unable to interpret. Uh, what went through your head? Uh, were you pulling through a loop-to-loop -loop or were you doing a negative G dive here with passengers on board? <laughs> there, I was, I was sort of doing both. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, very, very good. Yes. So a quantum superposition of both. <laughs> a quantum super, yes. And that brings us to the quantum cat and, and Nada. Uh, now, Nada, you're going to be sharing information and uh, creating, uh, creating uh, a, uh, a result uh, based on information from, from Captain Cole. We have 20 minutes uh, left for our official here. I want everyone to get uh, a taste for the work. Why don't we jump right into that? 
that I will stop sharing and uh, let me know if you can share your screen. I'm, I'm gonna try right now. I just have to say that I think I was having issues seeing the screen or maybe it was stuck because you were mentioning a picture and I, I definitely didn't see the picture. So. Oh, it's, it's really cute. Yes, uh, you're because you're in the UAE right now and your uh, your internet. Uh, uh, so thank you. Let us know when your internet is not not showing. I'll show you the cute picture of Aaron later. Awesome. I will attempt to share my screen now. Um, okay. I don't want to pick and choose between windows. It's okay. Let's let's try this. Yep. That's, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I have I have another little thing uh, where I had a much more mathematical um, interpretation of what this is, but uh, I, I don't know. I couldn't find an option to show both at the same time. So essentially, when we're trying to solve um, a problem on a quantum computer, it boils down to us having some sort of problem graph um, where these nodes here, uh, wait, uh, can you see me pointing? Is that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so these, these nodes here represent our variables, which um, as I, at least in, in the previous problem that uh, Dr. Faisal and I worked on, uh, were decisions whether sh I should invest in this asset um, or not, and so um, so these 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 decisions obviously are interconnected. So I, I'm if I invest in this one variable, I might not invest in another, or I might want to invest in both of these at the same time. And so to kind of uh, mimic that relationship, there are edges that are laid down. Um, a nice color for that. So there are edges that I would lay down between these variables. And then on this edge, there would be a weight to define how strong that relationship is or not. So I guess uh, for, for the problem of scheduling or optimizing um, flights, <laughs> um, we would, uh, would want to talk to, uh, you know, Captain Cole about what what exactly are these decisions that we're trying to make uh, or decide and what factors affect them that might help us know the, the weights that we would put to define the relationship between them. And then once we're done with that, then we can also, we'll be able to map it into the actual hardware of the computer. Um, and uh, more often than not, the problem graph is much more interconnected than um, the hardware graph, and so we would have to have special functions that allow us to um, still convey those relationships without um, losing any information. And Nada, I'm going to jump in really quick and mention here uh, that uh, we have um, Steve Reinhardt from QCI, which is Quantum Computing Inc., uh, um, and uh, they have um, a product uh, which actually deals with this kind of uh, problem, the one that you just mentioned, how do you go from problem graph to the actual hardware graph, as well as other functionalities. So um, maybe Steve, uh, we can ask Steve to um, raise a question at least, uh, you know, that might be of uh, relevance here. Uh, but our goal is to actually have a, a part two of this event uh, later on, where we would love to have Captain Cole join us again. And, and we would like to have um, Steve or his team, somebody from his team at QCI participate as well and have a much more um, technical, if you will, or a solid, you know, kind of discussion on how this would work in a, in a you know, for a very, very real problem that uh, Captain Cole is bringing, bringing forth to us. Back to you, Nada. Okay. So I, I guess my question for Dr. Uh, sorry, Captain Cole is um, what would these decision variables be? What, what, what are we, as a pilot, what are these um, decisions that you're trying to make that our product will be able to help you with? Um, so um, you are talking scheduling um, decisions or for, for personally for me, what I would want to see in a schedule or um, with regards to um, the execution of a flight? It's, it's, um, I, I, 
whatever I think we 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 discussed a, the pre-flight check before, and I, I'd like to hear more about that. Okay, so the what um, things that we look at before um, we leave a, a flight? What are the variables? Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a few. So, I mean, obviously it, it begins with flight planning and a big portion of that is fuel requirements. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so I don't know if you, do you want to just discuss it first or do you want to put it on? Yeah, or how I'd, you... I'd like to hear, I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear it more first. Oh, oh. Nat, Nat, I'm just going to interject for a second. Uh, so Captain Cole has prepared a, a document, uh, uh, of information, uh, we may not have got it to you. Have you seen that document yet? No, I actually haven't. Okay, so my apologies, uh, Captain Cole. Uh, he did, Captain Cole did prepare uh, the variable list uh, in order of, of importance. So uh, what, why don't we just uh, go through that, uh, Captain Cole. Uh, yeah. You mentioned fuel, uh, I think 40, 60% of a flight is fuel and, and crew. And then from that perspective, don't worry about the pre-flight checklist uh, uh, going from your clipboard to what we're doing right now, since you've already created this, this list because we've been working on this for a couple of weeks now. Uh, okay. Have the I can just go through the items that I've listed? Sure. Okay, this is weighted from uh, top priority to, to least priority. But again, these variables, the positioning does change depending on the, the stage of, of flight that you're in. Um, some of them, you know, from my perspective is what's important to me. Um, other people look at and say, well, why isn't that more important? But, you know, my job is to get the aircraft airborne safely and land safely. And in order to make those decisions, you have to prioritize. Um, and as I said, that some of the, the positioning of these things will move up on the, on the uh, list, depending on the stage of, um, for example, if you're just ready to depart, um, and four passengers don't show up and you have to take their baggage off for security reasons, all of a sudden that becomes a top priority when baggage and cargo is generally low on our list. Um, everything is done first and we say, okay, we have to take all the bags and we have to take all the cargo, but if there's weight restrictions, you can't take it all. So it's generally something that is on the lower end. But um, so just, just for the list itself, um, flight planning is obviously the first, um, first item which talks about routes, alternates, um, uh, yeah, the altitudes and, and efficiencies there. We talk about fuel. Uh, the next thing is weather. Uh, aircraft status uh, is the next point uh, with regards to, uh, especially with twin engine planning, because um, as it, you know, to be relevant to what's happening today, you've seen engine failures in twin engine aircraft. It's very important to have alternates and um, that's a that's a big thing for us. Um, then it then it's crew, which is this comes in with fatigue management, um, safety items, uh, security. That's aircraft security, airport security, passengers, um, the schedule itself, uh, on time takeoff, on time arrivals. It is important, but it's not the most important thing to us. Um, ATC slots, delays, restricted airspace, facility services, uh, baggage, uh, catering, and cargo, and. Again, that's the list that I create and try to make my decisions on and the variables can move up and down and they are weighted uh, at different times um, to a higher or lower uh, position. So those are the items for me. Okay, so um, what, there are certain things that stood out to me. So altitude, that is decided before, before the flight. Uh, there's, there's, yeah, correct. We have, um, uh, pre-flight plan that we get from our dispatchers and um, we look at winds. Uh, so they look at um, uh, a wind graph to see what the most economical uh, routes are depending on wind speed and wind direction. So uh, from a distance perspective, you may be flying further distance, but uh, because the upper winds are less on a certain route, you could have a, a northerly or a southerly route depending on uh, wind speeds which can make a big difference. Um, for example, when you fly across the Atlantic, um, always flying west is generally on a seven hour flight. It can be almost an hour longer because you're fighting the westerly winds, which is a general trend of wind. So how our dispatch works and um, they try and plan for going across the ocean. Can we get out of the jet stream to make um, the flight time um, less, of course, and less flight time is less fuel, which is cost. And, and that's also comes into play with uh, with 
um, with heights. So generally the more fuel you burn, you climb because the engines burn less fuel at higher altitudes. So, but it's all planned out for us. Um, we can make changes to it during the flight, but it's, it's comes as a plan for us that the altitudes that were, are selected. Okay. I'm, I'm more curious about the decisions that the pilot is um, able to um, control. So if the, um, the route is already given, what, yeah. what decisions would you, would you be worried about making? In well, the so, so if I'm, if I'm um, given a route and an altitude um, and actually during the flight to make decisions about um, um, changing altitudes is the same principles that the dispatcher uses during the flight. If you, um, there could be turbulence at that altitude, which is planned or unplanned. Sometimes um, you get clearer turbulence, which we can't see, and it's difficult to predict, which a lot of people have had that on flights. Um, uh, and also aircraft efficiencies. We see on the computer itself that um, the, the program that was created by the dispatcher says to climb in an hour, but we're showing in the actual aircraft and the weight where we're at, we'd like to climb now. Um, and that saves us fuel. So we're always looking for ways to climb. So that's, like I said, it's turbulence, it's uh, efficiencies um, uh, for fuel, and it's also ATC. Um, sometimes you're on routes where there's four or five aircraft ahead of you um, that are flying at slower speeds. So you got to make the decision. We have to climb early on the flight plan to get around these other aircraft or we'll be flying slower. So ultimately burning um, um, less fuel, but our schedule is going to, we're going to lose 15 minutes if we have to fall the slower aircraft. So there's three or four different variables with making a decision with regards to altitude. Mm -hmm. And, and another big one as well is the weight of the aircraft. We're only, uh, the airplane can only climb according to the schedule of the aircraft. Um, as far as weights go, uh, too heavy an aircraft can't, can't climb very high, unfortunately. So you're usually staged uh, in step climbs because you're burning fuel off en route. So you, you will progressively fly at a higher altitude as the flight um, progresses. Okay. I, I just have to alert everybody that I, I'm having issues with the audio. So I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how to deal with that right now. Okay. Um, so, so Natty, you're hearing, you're hearing some things, but, but not, not all the things. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's fine here. F Faisal, uh, can, could you uh, support, cause I think you've worked out uh, with, with Nata, uh, some of the, some of the, some of what this would, would look like. Yes, certainly. So Nada and I were talking about this yesterday, and uh, the idea was that, you know, the input that the captain just gave us uh, would appear as uh, nodes on the problem graph, which is on the left side of the screen. Uh, so Nada, can you hear me? Uh, yes. No? Okay. So do you think uh, one of the, um, you know, topics or, or um let's call them variables that the captain just mentioned could be labeled here perhaps as, as uh, the one of the two uh, vertices that you've connected with an edge? Yes. Um, so for example, um, you know, airplane height, like, you know, the, how high is it flying mm -hmm. could be perhaps one of the variables, right? Which would appear here. So that would be altitude. Right. Altitude. Altitude, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Altitude. Great. Right. right. So in, in formulating the problem coming from the, the you know, the uh, customer, which is captain, right, at the moment, uh, we would say, okay, one of the variables is altitude, and that goes as one of the... Um, you know, the, the nodes or the vertices in the graph, problem graph, that's going to come out of it. Very good, Nada. W what else did we have? Um, we had uh, the fuel. Fuel, yeah. Weather and fuel, I think, uh, jumped up, jumped out for me quite a bit. So let's put yeah. down uh, fuel consumption and uh, weather conditions. Is also how much fuel to carry part of the consideration? For, for me, that's the main 
the main thing for us to look at is the, the, the last minute decision that we make to accept the flight plan. Everybody looks at the, um, what fuels required. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, again, that's the cost for the company. There are, there are things built into the flight planning that's done by the dispatchers. He's required um, certain weather conditions and other things to give a minimum amount, but we take it as the pilots, as the, the group of four of us discuss and the, the, agreement is reached upon are we happy with what's there or we take extra and depending on the conditions of flight the weather there experience i mean you know some destinations maybe i've been to three times but my co-pilot has been there 10 times and he said oh, hold on a second captain the last two times i was there the air traffic control gave us vectors for 20 minutes and there goes your contingency field so those are things that pilot input that the dispatchers don't know about and then we say okay we'll take an extra 10 or 15 minutes of fuel that's, that's beautiful. I'm just going to interject for a moment as we're coming up on, on two o'clock. Uh, the public part of the seminar uh, ends, at, ends at two o'clock where we are actually solving this problem real time, as you can see. Now, there will be those who will not be able to stay with us. You're absolutely welcome to stick around. Uh, this is really a class. It's a workshop that we entered here from two to three o'clock. The uh, what we can do is share. We will we will uh, produce uh, a document uh, to share uh, what our findings are, so you can follow this. This is uh, groundbreaking uh, work with actual uh, quantum suppliers and actual pilot uh, Captain Cole, uh, and uh, we have uh, other teams uh, that we can't mention at this at this time. Uh, so I appreciate everyone's interest in, in being here. You're a special group uh, to, to show up. Half of you uh, are our friends. Uh, so appreciate that you're here. The, uh, what I would uh, uh, do then is, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Khan, uh, do you have any, any, any other words you want to say for those who need to drop at 2 o'clock? Because there are, there are those. Certainly. Th thanks, Dave. Yes, I want to say a few things. Uh, so what's happening here is what we are trying to do. Um, is that we're trying to formulate a problem that can be sent to a quantum computer, right? Uh, in the context of how it's laid out here on the screen. Um, what uh, seems to be also a part of the concern, at least from, from Caption Cole, is uh, actual decision-making. And of course, it's very relevant, right? Uh, on the fly, real-time decision-making. Uh, that is something perhaps that at the... At the moment, I can say is uh, what could be dealt with AI, right? Um, yeah. Of course, you know, this is a, a totally different debate in the sense of like, you know, how good the AI is, you know, how, how ethical it is and so forth. Uh, but certainly a component of the AI to make it even more efficient and uh, perhaps ethical and, and uh, more uh, safer in some sense would be a quantum computer running in the background, right? Making those really quick decisions for it to follow through with. Uh, that is uh, obviously a real world application, uh, practical problem to be solved. Uh, and we want to get into that eventually, right? But for the moment right now, we're just trying to, we have the stage of formulating the problem, the word problem, if you will, if you remember your high school math or any math problem that you know, you've right, come across, right. you're taking the word problem and formulating that uh, symbolically, uh, you know, technically, so you can actually send it to a machine. In this case, it would right. be a quantum computer. So we'll get into that uh, at a later stage, but I just wanted people to know that this is what's kind of you know happening, uh, and and we're grateful for Captain Cole to be uh, supplying us with this real you know uh, right. actionable intelligence, if you want to call it that. Can, can I say something to that, uh, Dr. Khan? I've, that's been my thoughts too of the future of, of aviation. You probably will have um, a, a pilot and a and a computer operator or someone that's that's um, cognizant in, in computers because essentially you know, the automation level now of aircraft is, is incredible. And um, at some point that, that will, you know, that the old hands and feet pilot guy that, you know, used to fly DC 350 years ago, there's no real requirements for that anymore. So you're operating systems and, you know, to that end is probably the future to see, as you said, um, AI or um, um, a computer operator of some kind on the flight deck. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wonderful, and and I'll just uh, uh, and 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 give you give it back to you by mentioning on Monday, March eighth at, at eleven a.m. EST, uh, we're going to get into that AI side. That's right. Uh, 
where we have we have uh, securing national critical infrastructure with adaptive machine uh, learning. Uh, uh, and it'll be the extension of what we're talking about right right now as air traffic uh, is considered by some nations to be critical. Uh, back, to, back to you, uh, Faisal. Awesome. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, it slipped my mind. The March 8th event is exactly going to be talking about how to put together interface uh, AI as we know it today and quantum computing technology. And uh, of course, there are people who are working on quantum AI as it is, as we speak. So the idea has been around for a while, theoretically. Uh, we want to see how we can put it to practice. Wonderful. Uh, if it's uh, uh, permissible, uh, Dave uh, and Captain and Nada, uh, shall we continue with this uh, problem a little bit more? And uh, Yes. So Captain, uh, if you want to perhaps, uh, sorry, Nada, if you want to put uh, uh, another variable here, uh, that would be awesome. I, I took the liberty of adding weather as yeah. a sort of parameter here for what the relationship between the fuel com consumption and altitude. Perfect, yeah, that's exactly it. So what will happen typically is that there would be a number uh, representing the importance of weather, you know, how heavy a, a role it plays for the connection between fuel consumption and altitude, right? Uh, so if it's actually really uh, a very interdependent, if these two variables are really highly interdependent and they affect one another, then this number for weather would be, you know, something bigger, like, you know, whatever that may be. Uh, and, and that comes from, uh, of course, a discussion with, with, the, uh, with the pilot, for example, right? And anybody else who's part of the decision-making process. So that number would go there. Shall we go ahead and put a number of uh, 0.8 for now? 80%. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. That's that that's good. pretty realistic. Wonderful. Oh wait, this doesn't. Oh, I thought it was just editing. <laughs> oh, that's go. all right. We can we can keep both of them. That's that's okay. Got there. Then. Wonderful. Now perhaps there could be another variable. Um, uh, we we talked about uh, crew fatigue. So this is a question I have for the captain, uh, Captain yes. Colin. How um, does you know, the duration of a flight or, and, and this is something I'm just uh, basing on my own experience uh, as, yeah. a, as a passenger. Uh, how is fatigue uh, affected by, you know, the duration of the flight, for example, or turbulence, how much turbulence is encountered uh, during a flight? Um, so perhaps we could connect that. So fatigue management could be one of the variables here. There we go. Right. And uh, would there be a connection, an edge between, um, say, uh, so, so another maybe another thing we can put in here is turbulence as right. a variable. As a variable. Yeah. Okay. Um, turbulence as a variable. I, I don't. <laughs> sorry. I, I think, can I just say that fatigue sorry. management? Um, that's that's um, more uh, physiological things because um, depending on the route of flight that you fly. Um, Sometimes people have issues with flying west. Some people have issues with flying east. Um, for example, if you're flying out of the European continent and you're flying west, uh, you can leave in the morning, but you end up landing in Los Angeles in the afternoon, but you just flew 12 hours. The other way around, you're leaving um, um, the European continent and flying to, to Tokyo, for example, you miss an entire night. So different people react differently to those types of things. And depending on how the schedule works, um, you could be flying to LA and a week and, or eight days later, then you're flying um, from there, you're flying the other way um, to Tokyo. So it, it, it's, it's fatigue management is, is, you know, how is your sleep affected when you get to the hotel? Some people can't sleep. They go, well, look, I just missed a whole night. I'm just going to have a regular day and try and sleep later. But um, it's it's the fatigue management is is more to do with crossing time zones than anything else. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, does fatigue management uh, uh, impact uh, the cost effectiveness of a flight, <clears throat> a particular flight? Uh, it does, um, in the fact that um, generally the longer haul flights you have to have more pilots, and the more time zones that you cross, and that is the reason. So. For example, um, if, if something is over a 12 hour flight, you have four pilots. And that's purely because 
you know, nobody would want two pilots sitting at the controls for 12 hours and then have to land an aircraft in bad weather. It's just wouldn't make any sense. Um, it's difficult. I mean, you know, you're up at a strange hour and you're, you're, it's dark outside and you have to remain vigilant for 12 hours. It's, it's almost impossible. So what we do is we rotate through, we'll have two different periods of sleep where you sit for three hours and you sleep for three hours and sit for three and sleep for three. Um, that's normally how it's done. And it's all according to length of flight. Um, up to about eight hours is two pilots, eight to 12 hours is three and anything over 12 is, uh, is four. And that's how they manage this, this issue with sleep and fatigue. Um, you know, some other airlines do other ways um, and, and they may carry less pilots, but generally what I find is, is um, you know, when you're flying a schedule of a 15 hour flight, it's quite handy to have four pilots. And then you'll see, yeah, exactly. There's beds on board and, to, and, and we have our little spot up there where we can sleep. Um, and, and on those long haul flights, that's what you'll see. You may see a couple of pilots wandering around the cabin, but there's two guys at the controls as well. So don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So perhaps we can put down, uh, so what I'm trying to do is I create a relationship between fatigue management of the crew uh, and, and the cost that is incurred by the, um, yeah. by the airline. So perhaps right. one of the variables could be cost here, uh, Nada. Yeah. And um, we could place it right there. So yep. we, we should keep in mind that, uh, at least in my mind, what's happening is that as we develop this little problem graph, the, the idea is to schedule. A, so when we say we want to solve a scheduling problem here, uh, we are saying that we're trying to optimize the scheduling, right? Minimize cost exactly. for, the, for the airlines, but also maximize safety and performance, right, for all involved passengers and crew. Correct. Wonderful. So now another has connected fuel consumption to cost, right? And uh, fatigue management also connects to cost, right? And fuel consumption is affected by altitude. Are there any other relationships between these three? For example, does altitude affect cost directly? Uh, perhaps not, right? But it does cost. It, 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 it does because it's, it's well, not directly, I guess it's, it's linked through fuel consumption. So the, it is a direct, if, if you had to uh, fly an aircraft at 20,000 feet with the, um, the amount of fuel that we require for heavy jets, you'd never be able to make it across the ocean because you're burning way too much fuel to low altitude. So it is correlated, but it's between fuel consumption is altitude goes to fuel consumption, which goes to cost. So I don't know if you connect the two directly um, from a mathematical perspective. I'm not sure how you would handle that, but um, it is related to cost, but it's through fuel consumption. So oh, that, that's perfect. Uh, so the way you would handle this is exactly how it's coming to you uh, because you want to keep the, the, uh, the original complexity of the problem, uh, you know, in place as much as you can to begin with. Uh, yes. Later on, uh, one could, uh, you know, question whether you can optimize this further with some kind of, you know, mathematical tricks or so forth. Uh, but right. that's to come later. Uh, but this looks great. We, we have a, you know, a pretty small graph for the moment, which is fine. Um, I hope the idea is being conveyed to the audience. Uh, one question I guess I would like to ask cap uh, the captain right now is, how many variables um, do you typically deal with uh, in such a situation, for example? Um, you know, we have like three, four here, four variables. Uh, what's the typical number? On a flight? On a flight, yeah. Yeah, I, it, it, it's, there's, I, I think it's quite a few. I mean, there's, um, within, within each of these things, there's also subsets of things as well. Um, with regards to, um, uh, costs, for example, there, there, it's everything. I mean, as soon as you get in the aircraft, um, uh, if there's an issue with the flight being delayed, there's a cost and the company knows that, um, there's a cost, um, because we have a landing slot where we're landing. There's a cost because you're going to have half your passengers miss their connections. So that's a cost for the company to consider as well. Um, yeah, fuel, cons fuel as well. Um, it, for an example, the last flight that I had done, um, we receive a pre-flight package to know our weights. And of course, all the weights are also dependent on fuel. 
And when we got our final flight plan um, from our dispatcher, we were 3,500 kilos heavier uh, than predicted. So our fuel consumption isn't correct anymore. And we try to carry obviously not a lot of extra fuel because fuel is weight again. So it's all pre-planned. And, and at that stage, I had to delay the flight 20 minutes to get extra fuel because I said, look, at our fuel consumption, there's no way we can leave. So there, and these, these are things, as I said, when you, you check in for a flight and these are things consistently, you're, you're, you're changing stuff all the time. You get a passenger who doesn't show up at the gate and they say, well, he's flown before, his baggage is on board do we take the bags off? Do we not? There's security issues there that people are not supposed to fly unless their baggage is on board, but certain countries won't accept it no matter what. Other countries say, look, he's already flown, so he is safe. And that's a decision that the captain has to make. Then you're, again, it's delaying the flight, taking the bags off. So uh, again, hundreds of decisions are made in a flight and, and continuously. For example, you know, you have a medical emergency on board, which, which I've had, um, uh, the, the purser comes up and said someone's having a heart attack. So, you know, you find it right away as the crew qualified. There's sometimes the people were nurses. Then it's it, next thing call you make to see if there's doctors on board. And if, if, if you think the percentage of carrying 100 or 400 people on board, there is a chance there's a doctor on board. So these are all decisions that are made um, on the fly, but there's things that we have to go through. So it's a very dynamic uh, decision making it you know, it's all in the day's work for us. But afterwards, when you think about it, you get to your hotel and you're sitting there and you're going, well, that was a flight to remember because there's so many with weather. And sometimes you go to an alternate, there's, it's quite a, 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 um, quite a lot of decisions are made. I hope that helps. It definitely does. And in fact, um, it it brings up a a comment that was made by um, David Nichols. Uh, I I wonder if he's still here. Uh, Regardless, I, I should mention this. Uh, his comment was um, about adoption of new technology, right? Like quantum technology uh, that we were talking about, like a quantum computer to help us with these, uh, you know, massive um, scheduling problems and, and uh, minimizing right. costs, optimizing safety. Uh, he says that until the benefit exceeds the cost, an industry decision maker is going to want to stick with older technology. In this case, you know, binary or classical computers. Uh, right. So I think his question was, you know, what would be the motivation um, and he had a couple of comments, so I'm, I'm going with both of them combined here. Uh, his comment yep. was, what would be the motivation for, for the industry, like the airline industry, to say, hey, let's go with this, right? Uh, and uh, let, let's keep in mind, uh, let me give you some background, Cap Cole, to, to maybe address that. Uh, one, one uh, you keep hearing in the news, you know, that uh, a certain quantum computer has outperformed a, a classical or regular binary computer by a certain amount. Uh, the latest round of such news actually came from D-Wave, uh, where they said that uh, that for a certain problem, whatever that was, their quantum processor was outperforming uh, a classical corresponding machine by 3 million, factor of 3 million, 3 million times wow. faster. So wow. let's say we go with this, right? This, uh, again, this is a, you know, it's a, it's a news article. Uh, I'm sure there'll be scientific papers to verify this, uh, you know, following soon. But suppose we take this as, as factual, and, and I don't know if there's, any, is there, if there's any reason not to be taking this as factual, but let's just say we do it now. Uh, how, would, um, how would you respond by saying that, okay, if you had a machine that was 3 million times faster, uh, given your experience in the cockpit uh, of over 30 years, do you think this would be a, a meaningful factor, uh, you know, well, speed up wise? For sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, decision making for us is cost. And also when you're saying about things, for example, scheduling, um, the systems that they've been using for 30 years, they tweak them and they do generally the things that they want. But I don't don't know if if anybody really um, is happy with every decision that's made through scheduling, because and, and eventually what happens is they're just faced with here's the deal. We have to crew the aircraft and this is what we have to do. And I understand that, but um, I I think there's a ton of inefficiencies in it still that, that, you know, if you can get a uh, part of the problem is, is, you know, if you think you have to, first of all, you have to schedule the aircraft themselves because you have to make efficient routes. If you fly from a destination to Tokyo and from Tokyo to somewhere else, how do you do that? That these planes do not make money when they're on the ground. So it's a funny thing too when passengers come in they look at the aircraft and they go oh this is nice and they sit down 
these are just your workhorses. They fly, you know, they're in the air 22 hours a day generally. And that's how they make money. So if you can efficiently schedule aircraft and the crews to fly them, and, and if, if you're not restricted in the computations through regular computers and regular scheduling systems, I think there's a massive opportunity to improve that. And I think every company will be interested in it because of that, because th there's a very thin line in anybody making, especially now with Corona and anybody trying to make money in aviation. It's never, you know, what the most famous line line I think was ever said by someone was um, how do you become a, a millionaire in aviation start off as a billionaire because <laughs> yeah. it's 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 you know there's so many costs involved and it's a difficult to make money so every airline is looking for ways to optimize and this is again you know a, a, a good way I think so yeah that's my answer awesome wonderful thank you so much uh, that was insightful um, so, um, Nada, would you like to say a few words about, say, say we assume uh, very naively that uh, we have, oh, sorry, Dave, go ahead. Oh, thank you. And, and just, just, just before, uh, Nada, to address something here, there's a second, uh, when we spoke, Captain Cole, there's a second reason that you thought quantum might be, might be useful in that it can handle so many more variables the, the uh, number of variables that current software handles uh, is limited to the understanding of the programmer. Uh, second of all, uh, the, the actual scheduler that you're working with will have often a greater range of ability to handle as, as, a, as a human computer. However, depending on who you work with, you'll get one set of computations versus another that comes out. Now, what, we're, what we realize is the problem is the, is the, uh, is the communication uh, break between the pilot yourself uh, and the programmer, in this case, uh, uh, NADA. Uh, what we're doing here is going through a systematic process, NADA, where we're dealing with only you know, three or four or more variables at a time, making sure we understand the interplay between them. That's a set. And then we go through it another set and another set. Ultimately, this becomes a, a graph uh, where we have permutations and combinations uh, in order to determine uh, what the variables are. And what might happen here is we have a set of questions that come out and we'll ask Captain Cole. And what I believe Captain Cole will go, oh yeah, that happens as well. An example of that, I think, is the example that Captain Cole gave where he has this experience with a certain, a certain airport, but his co-pilot says, I've been here a whole bunch of times and this always happens. So then they can mitigate that. And what we're doing is we're bringing in the experience of Captain Cole and the other pilots. And these are all the variables that no one knows about, certainly programmers don't know about. And we're trying to feed them to you in, a, in, a, in an individual, in, in, a, in a manner that is relevant uh, to uh, the sort of programs that you have solved in terms of portfolio optimization and, and financial uh, 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 services. Uh, this itself is called revenue management that I have some, some background uh, uh, with. So together, the four of us are, are, are uh, identifying ourselves as a bit of a dream team in that no one has ever done this before. And we're doing this in front of an audience, right? So, uh, and the audience will give us support. For example, David Nichols, uh, who identified specific questions uh, that, uh, that need to be addressed. I've been texting him and he's been texting back. Faisal identified that too. So when you have identif uh, specific questions, please bring them up. If we don't talk about it at this meetup, we'll be talking about it at the next meetup because we want your input. And if you have an area of expertise that we can pull you in, I'm happy to do that because my, my role is project manager. Uh, so, uh, so, so Nada, I'll, I'll, I'll give that uh, back to you so you and your invisible quantum cat can continue to calculate. She did make a noise earlier. I don't know whoever caught that, you know, bonus points. <laughs> I saw your eyes go big as if it was your stomach. Uh, I was worried. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah. So I remember we talked about there was one more variable that I, I caught um, and it was 
Sorry, I can Well, uh, how about we just look at the picture we have at the moment, Nada? Uh, the, graph, the problem graph, as it is. Um, mm -hmm. How about, um, what, 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 what would it take to take this problem graph as simple as it is, right? Of course, in mm -hmm. reality, this would be a huge mesh and a mess. <laughs> Uh, how, how would you take that uh, and send it to your uh, quantum computer's hardware? Um, okay, so the hardware uh, of the computer uh, looks like a combination of uh, a few of these kinds of cells. They call these cells that are connected to other cells. Um, but and, and, uh, uh, sorry to interject, but to be uh, to be clear, this is the uh, D-Wave quantum and ethers hardware that we're taking as an example, right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, so um, each one of these nodes here represents a single qubit. Um, and what we would like to do is to somehow map every variable that we have to one qubit, which will, you know, exist in a quantum superposition of the states zero and one um, in order to figure out um, which vari oh, what the decision is on that variable. Um, so our, our, uh, what we did earlier was to come up with our problem graph. And then once we have that problem graph, now we want to sort of transform it or translate it into the, um, hard, uh, hardware graph of the, the actual computer. So for example, I would take fuel consumption, <laughs> I would take fuel consumption and I would say, okay, this qubit here corresponds to fuel consumption. And then I would want to take cost and put it as this qubit here. Um, so if I if I did that, I need to make sure. So um, let me let me try and have very small lines just to represent what I'm. I put that here, and I would put I would say I want to put cost here, for example. Uh, the issue with that is now cost is not connected to fuel consumption. Not directly. Connected. Not directly. I would want it to be connected in some in some way, shape, or form. Um, and so there are different ways to do that. Uh, we can represent instead of using one qubit for cost. I can always move cost here, but there are usually hundreds of variables that are all connected in ways uh, that are a little bit more complex than this. So what I want, what I could do is I could represent cost as more than just one qubit. I could take a tree, they, they call it a subtree. Um, and so it's this qubit, this edge, and this qubit. Um, and then that would represent cost. And in that sense, now cost as the this subtree is connected to fuel consumption by this edge. And that's, I guess, what the uh, program, uh, what is it called? Uh, Dr. Faisal mentioned it earlier. I'm trying to remember the name um, that QCI had to uh, find. Yes, uh, it's called Catalyst. Catalyst. Uh, I, I kept trying to say Cascade, and I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> um, what what but, presumes yeah. that that's what yeah happens there? We'll hear hear from uh, their team uh, at a later stage, and then we'll know more details awesome. as to what they do. Um, sure. So I could do that for cost, let's say the cost is here, and this is fuel consumption. And uh, as I was discussing with Dr. Faisal the other day, uh, qubits have a certain level of noise in them. So there is some, some advantage to using multiple, uh, a system of qubits to represent one variable other than just one. Um, I just see, it's the idea, the old idea of redundancy, right, in the system. You create redundancy so that if one once one thing fails, you have another one and so forth. Yes. Awesome. I can um, understand that. That's what aviation is built on. <laughs> well, yes, exactly. Redundancy, redundancy. Every system, there's three of everything. Yeah, exactly. I understand. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, of course, redundancy also increases cost, right? So yeah. it's, it's the same After, idea. For aircraft as well. It's weight. It's, um, you know, if you have three hydraulic systems on an airplane, that's a lot of weight. So, but you need it. That's just the way it is. Right. So uh, one hopes that, you know, with a better understanding, at least uh, in the quantum computing arena, with the better understanding of quantum physics, um, we'll have, you know, less need for this redundancy 
And that would, of course, mean less cost and improved performance of these quantum computers. Great. So, Nada, go ahead. I'll continue. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's say we want to have altitude. We know that altitude is just connected to uh, fuel consumption. So we could just maybe use this for altitude. And then on that edge between them, we would have our weight, um, which was 0 0.8. I could maybe copy that. Let's steal it from there. And that 0 0.8 would uh, represent some sort of correlation uh, between, mm -hmm. not some sort of exactly the correlation between those two variables, um, mm -hmm. the, the strength of that correlation, how interdependent right. they are. And so forth. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then finally, fatigue management. Where would we put that? So fatigue management to cost. I could add that here, for example. Oh, this is not what I want. So we can take fatigue management. Add these here. And that would be connected to cost with this edge. Okay. And so now we have this graph. Oh wait, no, sorry, whoops. <laughs> that was not what I meant to do. There we go. So our graph, let me, let me use a different color because this is not very clear. Um, so now our edge looks more like, our, our graph kind of looks like that. Why, why is the color not, oh, there we go. This, this, yeah. Great. Wonderful. So we translated this graph into something that makes sense to the quantum computer. Right. So, and uh, th this is exactly the, the problem of sending your problem to your problem graph. The, the issue is that this, you know, efficiently sending your problem graph to the hardware graph uh, currently, you know, today in quantum computing is not an easy problem. And, um, but, but, you know, the, the, so the question would be, how do you optimize that process? <laughs> Separate question, yeah. optimizing, you know, the, the other stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, progress is being made there. In fact, another, uh, I should mention, wrote a paper on this. Uh, was it two years ago? Yeah. But with, uh, with Travis Humble, who's uh, actually the director, deputy director of the uh, Quantum Science um, Center at Oak Ridge National Lab. So uh, another knows her stuff. <laughs> wow. So this is awesome. Great. So another, what will happen now? Like once we have the problem sent to the hardware graph, mapped into it, what happens next? Do we just press a magic button and uh, something happens? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, uh, the system is kind of initialized with these, with this, uh, say, uh, initial state. Configuration, and, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it uh, evolves until it finds a kind of a, a, an equilibrium. And it, it, it's almost like looking, it's looking through all of the possible combinations all at once instead of going through them one. Computer, is that where the speed's like created changes. then, correct? That it, it can make decisions quicker. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. It can just, it's almost like just seeing the entire landscape wow. instead of going and traversing it, going, okay, what about here? Let me check yeah. if this is good for Yeah, her. yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Wonderful. So um, that looks good. Thank you, Nada. And thank you, Captain, for, for all this uh, tremendous input. Uh, Dave, um, Comments? Yes. Uh, so I, uh, I've, I've asked uh, the quantum kid uh, to clarify, uh, to summarize uh, this this work. Uh, Aaron, how how is your your drawing hasn't doesn't have to be shown here live, uh, and we can deal with it uh, later. Uh, but between the uh, quantum kid uh, and Vera, the head purser. Uh, we're taking on a new uh, a new era 
uh, in, in clarity from the investor's point of view. Uh, so David Nichols, uh, who I had spoken to a few hours previously about this project, uh, has some questions and we're using him as a, as a mechanism. So what we'll do uh, uh, is, Aaron, uh, we'll uh, show that picture uh, to David uh, so we can add any, any clarification. Uh, I am inspired uh, looking at your picture, Nada, as it is some sort of quantum cat, perhaps. There are the eyes. <laughs> Uh, and there is its mouth. Uh, is your cat around? Can you share your cat? Can you bring my camera? I can go grab her. I, I won't. I feel like I would just destroy the setup here. I can go make her up. Yeah. So uh, part of your part of your your drawing there, Aaron. Could you include this problem graph and hardware graph? So there's the cat. So. Nada is, is sharing the, the kitty cat. What's the kitty quantum kitty cat's name, Nada? Her name is Tinkerbell because she needs people to believe in her to exist. Oh, Tinkerbell. Oh, so oh. that the quantum cat can go from a superposition uh, into a, a, a one position. Into a measured state, yeah. <laughs> a measured state. Uh, and similarly, uh, in terms of Jeffrey's, uh, Captain Cole's description of the benefit of a quantum computer. Uh, could we uh, uh, say that once all the variables are, are measured and, and looked at, you did a much better job of eloquently describing it uh, at that point, uh, then just as your quantum cat has appeared, uh, would we expect a solution to appear? Uh, that's a question to you, Nada. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, can, I can I can say it again. You you are you're you're doing well uh, hearing every second word. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what what I wanted to do is relate the picture that that the quantum kid is drawing, where he's going to include your graph here, uh, mm -hmm. name it Tinkerbell, because oh. we want to believe uh, uh, that that this can happen. And through a belief system and project management and, and proper mathematics and a systematic method that has been done be in the past, uh, uh, I believe that when the button is pressed, uh, so perhaps, uh, could you pose as if you're pressing a button for the quantum kid? Maybe press, press your cat? Yes. Okay. Uh, so if you could, if so, got a smile there from, from Aaron. Uh, so he's going to build in Nada. Uh, pressing the button on the quantum cat for some purring to come out. Now, what I'm what I'm getting at is this purring. So the result of pressing the button, uh, it may be something simple or maybe something complex that needs more work. So keeping in mind uh, what David Nichols, as a representative investor, is is interested in, uh, once uh, a result comes out of this process which may require many iterations, just as you said, the hardware graph will require quite a few of them. My question here is, once we press the button, the quantum cat purrs, manifests, uh, that result, can you describe uh, what that looks like from the perspective of you doing this before for portfolio optimization? Um, well, it looks like, uh, <laughs> it is a, a vector of zeros and ones, but what it corresponds to is a solution of what should I do for each one of these possible decisions that I could have made, gotcha. which, okay. which ones of these are the ones that I should do. So a one would represent do this and a zero would say, no, don't do that. Um, and that's, it's uh, as easy as um, what was, what was the speed that we got? Was it five microseconds? Uh, I think, um, the minimum is 20 microseconds on the quantum annealer, at least it was at that time. Yeah. yeah. But a better result was got uh, in 200 microseconds. Mm -hmm. uh, but on a classical laptop, which is, you know, we were using another's laptop, uh, you know, which was uh, an average grade sort of, you know, laptop, you could say. The solutions were anywhere between five to 10 seconds. Wow. Which is it's not that much, but I mean, it's not that much of a time, but it, again, this is a small problem with uh, 63 variables. Um, but when we're looking at something more complex than that, 
Right. It, so it so it adds it, up. And, and uh, Captain Cole, this sounds like it relates to one of the constraints that you mentioned in terms of pure processing power, uh, where it just takes too long. Uh, so, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, so and that answers, we want answers faster in order to do the scenarios, which may eventually yeah. feed into the scheduler so they have better information rather than the guessing or going with the feeling. Correct. Yeah, that's 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 for for crew scheduling as well as aircraft efficiencies. Um, you know, as I said before, the aircraft doesn't make money when it's on the ground. So if you can efficiently schedule um, all the destinations and the the links between, uh, that's a also a very complicated equation. And and the capital cost for aircraft is massive. So um, you know we have to keep these things in the air. That's that's the that's the key. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, Quantum Kid Aaron, uh, would you, uh, in drawing the unhappy, uh, very expensive plane that's not making profit, if you could, if you could have a version of it on the ground, maybe looking up, uh, waving at the Quantum Kid version on uh, Aaron Airways Airlines, uh, which is able to uh, rain money uh, upon the the investors and stakeholders kind of a version like that. It might be a, a separate, like we usually do three strip comics. That might be a second strip there, or just an idea. Well, Coming back. Here, I, like I didn't it. finish. If, you, if I could show it right now. Oh, yes. So here wait, is regular schedule. It's at nighttime. Everyone's tired. Horrible weather because we can't schedule it properly. People half sleeping, a guy bored and a guy half focusing driving. Very moody people here because they can't get enough sleep in uncomfortable chairs. Also here is a uh, is just regular fuel with carbon dioxide that's causing global warming. Also uh, very expensive. Hmm. Okay. Nice. So we're on. So we're on the right path there, uh, in that you're capturing the variables uh, in the problem and hardware graphs here. Uh, so this will act as an as an interface uh, where uh, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to uh, ensure more information comes in. So as a as a feeding a graphical feeding mechanism uh, that we could extend uh, uh, to other crew members, not just not just the captain. The variables coming in. Uh, so that's great. Now coming back to uh, what you shared, Nada, the what I'm what I'm looking for. What, you've answered my question in that you have a set of you have a set of of actions. Mm -hmm. uh, so per variable is a set of act recommendations. Yes. So what happened? I'll turn to to Captain Cole here. So for each of these variables, as things change on the micro, sounds like we got to wait. Oh my God, twenty microseconds. Uh, the as the ver as the information shows up, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, more more recommendations show up. You know, as as in what to do. Uh, so what I'm looking for now uh, is to be able to create a real time interface between this checklist that you that you have. Certainly, this one for pre flight, but even during flight, as you're taking things into consideration as their variables showing up, it would be really neat if we create a bit of an AI that took the recommendations from uh, the output of your, of your quantum cat problem graph, hardware graph system, uh, and uh, made it so that everybody uh, in the cabin uh, will purr more. Uh, so relating to quantum kids uh, where everyone's irritated, maybe in the happy plane, uh, Aaron, you can make a cat there. Everyone's kind of stroking the cat like evil geniuses, which I think Nada does when she's not on camera, uh, <laughs> and everybody feels better. Uh, so that's a, a way of relating. And perhaps this also can be a mechanism of teaching this graph theory uh, to <laughs> Captain, as well as other uh, uh, resources that provide input, right? So the Captain is is bringing input in. And just as we're becoming educated on, on what he faces, uh, what we also uh, are looking to do is to educate the captain uh, with, with uh, a, a way of, of understanding what we're doing. 
and this is where the quantum kid comes in comes in handy because if it makes sense to a to a t another ten year old, uh, then uh, it at least will will not sound so scary. I think one of the biggest challenges we have is the intimidation factor and the non belief factor. We can get around both of them by having a 10 year old quantum kid actually figuring this stuff out. Uh, and in this way, both of the non-believers uh, as per your cat and Nata Tinker Tinkerbell, uh, as well as for those who want to believe, but are terrified by the mathematics, the power of Dr. Faisal Shah Khan. Uh, uh, this way we have a nice way uh, of, of educating. I haven't figured all this out, but my experience with the sort of graphics that the quantum kid uh, shows, I think we can, I think we can uh, come up with something. Uh, just in terms of those graphics, uh, just to share with you an extension of, of where we're, we're, we're going with this. Uh, and in a future meetup, uh, we are looking at tagging uh, planes, so electronics in, in, in the airplanes, as well as uh, even the devices that move your luggage. Uh, with quantum circuitry. Uh, and as a way of explaining this uh, to, to scientists who are, who are now working on, on this, uh, here we have uh, a, 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 a six-panel a six, uh, storyboard. Here's the first three, where Aaron, the quantum kid, as, as French-looking baby Yoda, finds a quantum chip. Uh, and then uh, he is hungry and finds Volterra, that's, that's Vera uh, with, uh, that's, that's uh, Aaron's mom right there, uh, wants a baby chip, uh, wants a baby girl chip. Uh, and so uh, she's thinking PCB, PCB, uh, printed circuit board. Volterra, uh, who is, was on this call, uh, is our Canadian 3D printing uh, uh, tool, uh, which the US Army is using right now. The Defense Department's using it. Uh, this was uh, designed in Minecraft, uh, Vera, maybe the first Minecraft mommy appearing on a quantum show. Uh, and uh, through the, the diagramming of the dangerous sounding and scary looking quantum graph theory that Dr. Faisal Shah Khan represents, the dark leaf is, is born, a circuit that is inspired by classical quantum hybrid processes in nature like photosynthesis. And then we see here the dark leaf quantumly sparkling with unknown powers. So perhaps uh, what we could draw, uh, Aaron, uh, is, is uh, Nada's Tinkerbells with, with sparkliness when she goes into quantum action. Uh, and uh, what we have here next uh, is uh, we're actually, because we're working uh, with the US Air Force and US Space Force, uh, uh, we are in, uh, about to be in contact with Princeton uh, that has launched a CubeSat on the 20th of this month using uh, one of our partners' technology, uh, what we have going on uh, for another time uh, is this technology, not only uh, will it be uh, available uh, in terms of hardware platform uh, for the airline industry, uh, but that uh, far-fetched looking uh, uh, NXQ1 quantum version of the USS Enterprise for you Star Trek fans out there uh, may just come to light. So what, what Aaron is actually doing is he's, he's identifying technology where uh, we are having conversations with our extended partner group and making it uh, in a way uh, that is, is understandable. Uh, so, and, and uh, Vera... Uh, I, I like how you're, you're nodding there. Uh, we'll be coming up with uh, more videos uh, to support uh, the quantum kid and his end suffering and, and saving the world. Uh, on, on that, uh, we, it's now a quarter to three. I, I, uh, we have not had a break uh, and uh, quantum kid or anyone needs to take a break. Uh, I think we're gonna be uh, wrapping, wrapping it up uh, now. The, if there's a, any other questions, I will move this off the screen. Was I, I was sharing the screen, yes? I did that properly? Yeah. Okay, so I will uh, end my share. Uh, there we go. Okay, 
so that was a bit of a, a bit of a wrap up and put in perspective uh, what we're what we're up to here, uh, and uh, trying to take off any intimidation. Uh, in that we did get into uh, some of the technical work. Uh, we want this to be understandable by everybody, not not just the the quantum developers uh, out there. And we have a comprehensive plan uh, that that begins and ends with scheduling. And so, uh, Captain Cole, what you represent here uh, is is, uh, is is so important to us because you are the one who is saying, "I think this is possible. Uh, I think there's some value here." And again, it was. Uh, quicker ability to calculate because of the number of variables involved, uh, as well as the the ability uh, to to deal with even more variables that currently have been dealt with. Uh, we don't know what the limits are in terms of uh, ability to calculate. Uh, we know that Nada and and Tinkerbell, her quantum cat, ha may have limitless uh, abilities. Uh, so we're not putting any caps on, but we're going to find out where those are. And we're going to do those so in a practical experiment within the abilities of the crew that we have. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a headhunter in the quantum world, uh, uh, what I do is I find the best and I bring them aboard. And part of that is having a good heart, uh, wanting better. Uh, and uh, that's what you can find in, in all of us. And I'm very proud of that. And for everybody who has uh, come along, our friends who want this to happen as well. Uh, while we become exceedingly rich. That's a very important thing. I want the good guys yeah. uh, to become uh, extraordinarily rich as an example of doing the right thing. And us geeks uh, can now rule the world uh, by doing good things, uh, sharing our, our quantum uh, physics inspired mathematics in a practical manner where we're solving problems and, and pulling ourselves uh, out of this uh, negative, uh, 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 a timeline with some positivity. So those are, are, are my, my closing words. Uh, I'll, I'll turn to uh, yourself, Captain Cole, and then the, uh, the uh, uh, Nada and, and Faisal, uh, Quantum Kid, uh, and Vera and uh, David Wilkinson, if we're able to, if we bring them uh, back in. Hazel, I'll rely on you to turn the speaker back on. I think that if you can talk, perhaps if you can turn David's uh, video back on. Uh, up from for you, Captain Cole, would you please give your honest opinion of of in experiencing our team, uh, whether you think we can do the job or not? And so, okay, if it's not, we want to identify what we need, and we'll bring that in. No, I think it's. Um... Uh, listen, it's, it's, it's a complicated issue, but it's, um, it is something that the airlines do need. And um, if you look for the future, this is the future. And um, we have to find a way to try and, and incorporate this into successful companies for them to go forward. Um, this, is, this is perfect. Um, and, and the platform that you guys are using, you have to get the information out there. Um, people, I think, are, are skeptical about it because it, it is a you know, way out there uh, uh, principle right now. But you know, if that was said about a lot of things in the past and, and um, this, this is no different and, and you guys are a testament to, um, to, to making these things, um, bringing them into reality and, and moving forward. And if I can be part of it, then I'm all for better schedules and um, uh, better efficiencies and the future. So I believe in aliens. There you go. I'm a pilot and he said it. <laughs> awesome. Anyways, well, there's, there's, there's the Star Trek good, side. Very good discussion, but I think we're we're just on the tip of it. There's, there's so much more to talk about. So, yeah, uh, there, 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 there really is, and, and we're we're grateful to to have you around, Captain Cole. Uh, in my experience for for uh, three decades, uh, doing as a software developer, uh, the greatest risk has always been not getting it from the horse's mouth, uh, uh, not getting it from yeah. the source. Uh, as the, the captain, uh, and, and I'm still appreciating the variables that you have to deal with. 
So we, we've begun an, 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 a, a systematic approach here to validate uh, what we believe can be done uh, and are prepared to be surprised that it can do a better job than we expected. Right. Ultimately, all we're doing is getting people to communicate. We're, we're just making it easier to understand what can be done through quantum physics inspired mathematics uh, with right. an experienced team, uh, Dr. Faisal Shah Khan, NADA, uh, as, as well as uh, the other uh, multiple parties that are involved, one of which was, was mentioned by, by Dr. Khan. We have our partners. Uh, Dr. Khan is legendary at Khalifa University. We have multiple resources uh, that are, are available. He's choosing the best of the best. Uh, and we're very thankful for that, as well as the support uh, through the York University Quantum Computing for Social Impact Group uh, from uh, other meetups that have supported us in the past, Washington uh, DC meetup as well. Uh, is a remarkable team uh, that has uh, uh, come together over the past six months uh, to uh, bring us to this meetup where, where for the first time, I think we are practically uh, solving things and we're grateful for, for the quantum kid. Uh, so so with, with that, uh, Nada, can I have your closing remarks? Um, I, I really hope you didn't address me before because I think I lost audio for like a full minute. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm just, I'm very excited. I, I'm, I'm grateful to have Captain Cole with us. As you said, straight from the horse's mouth, I, 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 I really look forward to discussing all of this stuff more. Um, me too. And it, it sounds like a real challenge and I, I like that. I'm, excited. I'm really just excited. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Khan, your words. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, Captain Cole, um, amazing, uh, you know, talking to you and uh, seeing a, a, a person who's actually like, you know, um, in the field, boots on the ground, right? Uh, you know, uh, support uh, in a practical sense, not just like, you know, not that, that just, you were just saying it, <laughs> you were supporting yeah. it because you see some potential here. Uh, and, yeah. and I think it was a great uh, opportunity for me to actually talk to, you know, uh, a pilot and, and see how, you know, what, what the input can be from, from, a, from a practical user's point of view. And yeah. I think this is, uh, this is, for me at least, this was the first opportunity. And I hope that this is actually, because, you know, this becomes more common in the quantum ecosystem, quantum technology ecosystem uh, more so, so we can have, you know, more developments, you know, uh, in the technology itself. So thank you so much for for uh, taking the time to come and uh, chat My with pleasure. us. My pleasure. My pleasure. We we look forward to having you again. Uh, you know, in the next meetup. Great. Uh, Perfect. We'll have, awesome. we'll have a follow up. And Quantum Kid has raised his hand. <laughs> oh, okay. I finished my singing, so I'm just gonna take a little moment to introduce you. Please. Again, so. This is the regular schedule, very, very expensive, uh, tire, tiring at night, horrible weather too, takes very long. It takes very long to get there because it's hard to navigate through. Mm -hmm. Very lazy pa uh, pilots and very sad, depressed because they're so tired. And then angry, angry people sitting there since it's, it's so boring mm -hmm. and they can't sleep because of the loud noise this engine is making mm -hmm. from turning the oily fuel into the, into energy mm -hmm. in a very inefficient way and yeah. also releasing carbon dioxide yeah well, and you show, and you sh and you showed us that so as your as your mentor I'll just qualify it saying uh, pilots who are trying to do their best so let's let's now see the, the I think you have another drawing to share with us. Yeah. So here is the quantum schedule, very advanced aerodynamics uh, version of a plane. So in the engines here, it very huge wing. Um, there's antimatter fire, which is here releasing. Uh, oxygen also it's a uh, very cheap as you can see 
$129. There is David getting sucked into the event horizon. <laughs> uh, also, wonderful weather since it's, um, it's this. It's, wait, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the quantum AI that's, that's doing all the hard work and it's driving it. And here's Captain Cole trying to learn, like, oh my God, how is the quantum computer doing this? And then me, they're like, yay, everyone's happy. There is Nada, like, petting her, petting her cat. And then the cat is like, meow. Mm. And then my mom here, happy that everyone's happy, like me. And then Dave, like, ah, because... He, he saw his idea come to real life. And then there's Dr. Faisal doing computer science stuff on his quantum computer. I, I like, love the, how you got my hair right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is amazing quality, this computer. And then here is... Uh, doesn't need fuel. It just does quantum fusion, which is a higher technology of nuclear fusion. Also, it can break the particles or atoms back down, so it can continue continue the process forever. Uh, Very nice. Yeah, and and you may have more to share, but I I think that's wonderful what you what you've given. You identify things that, that we believe we can do with our quantum technology. You've also introduced items that we're not sure how we can do. Uh, the, the value here, though, is we old people, we limit our imagination as to what we think we can be done, and then we give up on that. Whereas you young people raise the level. Uh, and by doing so in a fluid storytelling way, it inspires us to find a way to get that that done. And I think that's something that uh, Steve Jobs uh, uh, did that uh, as, as well. Uh, so continue to inspire us, uh, Quantum Kid. Uh, and Vera, uh, any any closing words for your, on your part as our, as our mock uh, head uh, uh, purser, uh, where on a later date, we'll get the top tips from, from Jeffrey uh, and then we can uh, uh, share that information uh, to uh, cabin crew who are interested in what we're up to. Well, I surely learned a lot myself. Um, I, I just wanted to express my appreciation to um, your team, to Dark Star, um, how you truly put your time um, and effort on not just, um, you know, um, putting your time on uh, studying and researching on quantum, uh, the technologies, but also putting on the possibilities of influencing the next generation, which is the, the unlimited future. So I believe that with more kids like Aaron joining in, um, that we will have a greater uh, impact in the future. Oh, lovely! Here, here, here! I, I think that uh, coming from you as as the as the mom uh, is so important because uh, you're able to validate that we're 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 as a team we're doing uh, this this intention, uh, and uh, yeah, it's quantum uh, technology is is we expect that to be hot for the next how many decades, uh, Dr. Khan? Oh, I think forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, so. So it's important. It's important to start now and to bring everybody along for for the ride. Uh, this is the chance. That humanity has a chance to suddenly move forward. Uh, this is quantum tech is or quantum mathematics. Quantum physics has been around for decades, but we now have the the abilities. Uh, and and with uh, young ladies like like Nada, uh, trained by Dr. Khan, uh, brilliant in your own right. Uh, and uh, with a track record of portfolio optimization, our focus here uh, is making money. We're able to make money as we create more value, as we reduce stress, and ultimately uh, solve for the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which is part of the, the Quantum Kids 
uh, Save the World and, and Suffering video. Uh, we'll include that uh, when we put that out and look forward to, to more uh, videos and as such. Uh, so on behalf of, of Dark Star and, and David Wilkinson, our, our CEO, uh, uh, thank you for, for your, your time and uh, really appreciate those who stuck around for this extra hour, which was geek time. Uh, we're just a workshop, we're doing our best uh, and we're, we're executing on what we said that we would do. We'll keep you informed. We look forward for you showing up for the next time, March 8th. What time, Dr. Khan, March 8th? Uh, on March 8th, the event is um, 11 a.m. EST. EST, 11 a.m., exactly. 11 a.m. EST, yes. Okay. And then, so, and, and uh, so signing off now, uh, and, and from, uh, from Captain Cole in Toronto, uh, myself in, in Toronto, uh, the Quantum Kid, and Mom Vera in, in Barrie, uh, Dr. Faisal Shah Khan uh, in uh, you're in Las Vegas, Las Vegas. Thank you. And Nada, you are in Abu Dhabi, UAE, <laughs> Abu Dhabi, UAE. Uh, from all of us, uh, thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, wish you a, a great uh, afternoon and uh, we'll be back for more. Thank Cheers. you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>